Hi y'all, this is Stephanie from Spinster Station. I am a person on YouTube that enjoys talking about her knitting projects and other crafting projects such as sewing or quilting, um, sometimes even cooking. And uh, today we're doing a update, a monthly update. It's a little late, but honestly, a lot of things have been going on in Oct uh, August and uh, July. And you know, it's just one of those times where sometimes you get burnt out about certain things. So we're gonna do an update on my projects that I have going right now. And then we're also gonna do a little bit of a dive into burnout at the end of this episode, if you're interested in discussing anything like that. Uh, if you are new here, welcome to my channel. Hopefully this doesn't bore you or send you down a rabbit hole of depression or anything like that. And uh, for those that are returning, thanks for coming back. And uh, we'll start off with uh, my finished projects. All right, so like I mentioned before, a lot of things have been happening, um, just unfortunately not a lot of crafting. Uh, so I have one project complete. Uh, for you guys, and it is the Simple Skype Socks by Adrienne Koo, I believe her last name is. And um, this is made out of the Zen Yarn Garden. It is their super fine fingering weight yarn, and the colorway is Midnight Blue. And it is 90% uh, superwash merino, super fine superwash merino, and 10% nylon. And um, it's got this really fun little pattern that you guys can see really quick where it's got like a nice little slip stitch and ribbing going on and I did a two by two rib up top not a super large cuff um, but then it's got the ribbing all the way down uh, the whole entire leg and then the top of the foot so it helps give a little bit of extra stretch for this and so this has been made for a friend in England and so they're still on the blockers but they're completely dry and um, so far, it seems like I did better on my gauge this time. Uh, for these socks, they seem to be fitting relatively even now that they're blocked. And um, I cast it on 64 stitches uh, for this on double pointed needles and a size zero needles. So these are done and they're actually nice and soft. So that's what I have completed for you guys this month. Um, and then to be honest, probably next month, I may not have a lot because in September, I'm actually gonna be traveling for a little bit of time. I've been waiting for this vacation for quite a while now. And so there's gonna be that going on. We'll see what I can get done for you guys for my next update date. But uh, now that we're done with that, we'll go on to my whips. So for Whips in Progress, I also have the same uh, pattern. I'm still using the same pattern, so it's the Simple Skype so Socks by Adrian Koo. Um, this is a paid for pattern. It is $6 USD. Um, and uh, so this, let me see where it is at. Got a couple bags here. Um, so this one, I'm trying a new technique, which I've never done before, uh, for doing socks and it is two at a time socks. So I've got my two balls of yarn going. You might be wondering why I have two balls of yarn for this. Well, these socks were for my dad. So larger feet. Um, he still wants a pretty long cuff. So I bought two skeins just to be safe to make sure I had enough for him since I have never done a male foot size sock. And I tend to use up most of my yarn for whenever I do socks for my size because I like having a longer um, leg and cuff on them. And I think he does too. So I have two of these. These are the Shirsty Cat Designs. It's her Just Sock Base and it is the colorway of Trench. And it's 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. Uh, it is 462 yards per 100 grams. Both of these are 100 gram uh, balls. 
and I cast it on with a size one needle, which is a 2.25 millimeter needle. And I cast it on 72 stitches. And this new, this is a new cast on technique for me. It's two at a time. You have two different needles. So you have the front part of the sock or whatever you deem as the front part of the sock. You have that um, one set of needles here one set of needles here in the front and then your back stitches are on the second needle. So basically you would start on one side and you always want your uh, yarns facing like the same way, like your tail, not your tails, but like your working yarn facing the same way. So, and you would use the same needles for the front side to knit across here and then over to here and you want to make sure you finish those and not kind of stop in the middle because you can accidentally go backwards and it gets all messed up. It's yeah, it's something that I've done before. So once you like get used to it, it's not so bad. Um, and the main reason why I'm doing a two at a time is besides the fact that you will actually get two socks by the time that you're done with this is also because like I've said before, I've had issues with my tension where like the first sock will be super tight and the second sock is a little less uh, tight a little more loose so when I block them they're they're not quite like they're fraternal twins not identical twins and so I'm just trying to like reduce the variation of how my tension might change on different days when I'm working on the socks so so far they look like they're about the same tension which is good um, and uh, it looks skinny I know it looks super skinny for a man's foot but I have already tested and had my dad put them on and they do fit over his sock. It's just because this uh, certain pattern has really good, there's a lot of ribbing in it. So it allows like for really good stretch. So it's gonna be fine. But uh, I definitely had him try it on when I only had about the cuff and a little bit knitted down here. Uh, make sure you always do that. If you're trying something out new, if you have the ability to have that person or yourself try the socks on to make sure it's the right size. Uh, definitely do so before you keep going. Um, so I found that with this method, I'm not so eager to pick up my knitting. I don't know, for some odd reason, my mind, my brain just prefers like doing one sock at a time, just really focusing on it, not having to shift and play with two balls of yarn. And it just, it feels like there's more time of me just trying to like make sure everything's neat. I'm not tangling my yarns and making sure I'm like going through the whole process um, correctly. And I feel like, you know, that just adds on time to like having to deal with these little details. And so I don't pick this up as much, but it is something that I'm hoping to get done before it starts getting cool for my dad. And so that's what I'm currently working on right now. And, uh, yeah, let me know like what techniques you guys like to use for knitting your socks. Um, I've so far tried, uh, I've done double point needles. That's like my go-to method. I've now been working with two at a time, which isn't bad. You just have to get used to the nuances of it. I've also done a little bit of the nine inch tiny circular needles. Um, but I've like kind of switched in between that and switching them onto double points when I get to certain flaps. At some point I do want to do a full sock with just the nine inch needles and see do I really need to like, you know, switch it over to DPNs, figure that out. Um, I'm also gonna be trying a different set of needles for when I'm traveling as well, which we'll get into for uh, my future projects and acquisitions. But yeah, so this is my current whip right now. And then I do plan to cast something on for Japan, and I'll get to that in the future. So yeah, um, so far, let me get a close up. Again, the same pattern. It's not as noticeable because there's more striping and variation in this fabric, but I did want to give my dad like a little bit more give um, and stretch without actually adding nylon, um, and then also just give it some texture. So. Uh, and he he liked the pattern so that's that's what we're going with so now we'll go on to acquisitions <laughs>
So for acquisitions, I actually got quite a bit recently in the mail and also a little something for my Japan trip. Well, yes, I know like I need more yarn uh, for my Japan trip, but instead I wanted to try out uh, doing some DK weight uh, socks, something a little bigger, a little easier to work on, um, just to kind of like hold me over during the plane flight because it's gonna be about 11 hours I think we're taking like off from San Francisco and then flying over to Tokyo so that's about 11 and a half hours over ocean so <laughs> gotta keep myself busy because I don't really sleep a lot on planes but uh, what I bought for the trip is um, this is a DK weight yarn it's called Sueño by Haiku and it's 80% superwash merino and 20% bamboo. Um, and I haven't worked with this yarn before, but some friends at Knit Night have, and they find that this washes up really beautifully, blooms out, so these would be extra warm socks. Um, and you know, um, I always get cold feet during the winter, so it'll be nice to have something like this. So I, since it's a DK weight yarn, I plan to probably cast down about 48 stitches instead. I'm also using slightly larger needles, so that's why I'm compensating for less stitches as well. Uh, so this one has 225 yards in it. Hopefully, I'm thinking of doing like a short cuff sock for this, uh, just because I only have one ball of yarn and I want to make sure I can get two socks out of it um, for my feet. So the colorway is called medallion, but it's this lovely mustard gold. For some reason, I just wanted some like nice plain mustard gold socks. And um, I've also bought a set of needles to take on this trip. I was trying to find something because whenever you're traveling on the airplane, some places, even though you can check like the international uh, guidelines for knitting needles and things like that and things are usually approved some you know security workers just confiscate stuff like even though if you say hey this is allowed this is um i've checked the guidelines it should be fine sometimes things get confiscated and that's never a fun thing um so i try to like make my needles not look as intimidating or as scary as possible uh, for the most part, uh, last time I traveled, I didn't have issues with DPNs, but I am going to, that was in like internal travel in the United States, so I don't know what international travel is going to look like. Um, England also, I took circular needles, I didn't have an issue there. I just don't know, so I was planning to try and find something that didn't look as scary. So I got these size US3 Haya Haya needles, so they're bamboo tipped. And they're still relatively short. So this is the first time I will be trying these little flexi kind of needles. Um, they come in a set of three. So I think what I can do is I can put half my needle, um, half of my stitches on one of the needles and the other half on the other needles. And then I'll kind of use it as DPNs to like use this third needle to knit across and do my things. So because I was doing this, um, I didn't really want to do a complicated pattern something with texture which would be nice and make it, it take a little longer to knit something for at least the plain right um, but hopefully these will not be confiscated they're slightly larger like i said they are us threes or 3.25 millimeter needles to uh, help make these a little bit not as tight bloom a little bit more um, just to compensate for that dk weight yarn and i will be casting on about 48 inches for these ones and I will discuss kind of the pattern that I want to use in my future projects. So those are my two acquisitions from my local yarn store. And now I'll be going on to the acquisitions I received in the mail. So there is a indie dyer called Long Dog Yarns. And she, I found her through, I think, Instagram. I saw one of her reels about doing uh another run like i think she's just doing it again for this year she's already done it before but she has this one collection to rule them all so they're yarns that are dyed and inspired by lord of the rings and i saw some of her samples they were absolutely gorgeous 
So of course I had to get some of these yarns. I ordered this back in February, I think, and it came in last month. So uh, very excited. Um, she had a lot of other colors. These are just for some reason, this was what I was craving palette wise, but she had like reds and golds and all these lovely colors. And these are just the ones that caught my eye and I felt like I needed to get. So this, again, this is Long Dog Yarns. And she has a website, you can go there, check out her yarn. She's got other collections that she does. And maybe again, she'll open up this at some point again, hopefully. Uh, so you can also get some of these Lord of the Ring inspired yarns. But for the first ones I got, I have, this is a sock set. So I'll just go in a little quick. It's got this beautiful sage-ish green, it's a little murky. And then we've got this lighter gray with, um, a little bit of that sage green inspiration speckles grays some browns even too and this colorway is called the deep breath before the plunge and this is made out of her merino sock set base so it's got 75 percent superwash and 25 percent nylon and there is 463 yards per 100 grams but I just really loved it. I felt like it really captured that scene with Gandalf and Pippin waiting for like on the edge of when Minas Tirith is going to be uh, invaded by Mordor and Sauron. And it's just like, I thought it was a really good capture of the colors that you see in that scene. So this is a sock set. I'll be making socks with these at some point. And then I also got another sock set, but this time, this one is called A Shortcut to Mushrooms. And so there was the option, you could either get it in the Moreno sock set, um, which is just pure white uh, Moreno that she died on. Um, but then there was also a Yak sock set. So this one has 70% superwash Moreno, 20% Yak, and 10% nylon. And so yak is traditionally like a brown color. Um, so I'm assuming the skeins that she had, even though it was 70% merino, um, it probably still had a light brown color to it before she died or like even a dark brown color to it before she died. So when you dye over a brown, it tends to like make the colors more earthy and muted. Uh, so if you were able to ever see a shortcut to mushrooms dyed on her merino um, base versus her yak base. The merino base is like very light green, vibrant colors. And then this one was a little skein of Samwise the Brave. And he was like, his color is actually closer to this color if you dyed it on regular merino. But here, because it's dyed on a darker base that had brown on it, it turns it more into like a brownish yellowish color instead of the gold color that she was dying so i just thought it was fun um it's really like just earthy and just very mushroomy and i just really loved it and i always like adding a little if i can like add yak into something it's really lovely soft uh, warm material and so this is um this one has 437 yards in the set but still definitely enough for a sock so Let's get a close up again of these lovely colors. And that is my second sock set that I got. And then the third colorway that I got is just called Lord, the Lord of the Rings. So this basically just encapsulates Lord of the Rings um, for her. And it's on a Surrey lace base, so it is a, a lace weight yarn. It is 65% baby alpaca and 35% silk. So it's kind of like a mohair quality to it. It's like if you are sensitive to mohair, maybe you would do better with the alpaca um, silk kind of fingering, but it will give like your garment a nice halo. 
So this one has beautiful blues and browns and whites and um, greenish like turquoise colors. And this I want to carry along yeah, um, another strand of yarn for like a sweater, you know, just to give like a really nice halo, just to give it some beautiful light blue, green, gold background to it. So this one has uh, 437 yards in the bundle for 100 grams. And I got three skeins of this, so that way I should have enough for a sweater quantity at some point. But uh, this is something that will definitely go into the stash. All this is gonna go into the stash immediately uh, for future use. It's not like, it's something that I definitely didn't wanna take traveling. You know, a sueño, something that you can usually acquire pretty easily isn't super expensive uh, if something gets confiscated you know so I didn't want to take any of this on my trip with me but those are my acquisitions for this past month and a half basically so here we go again as you can see very much similar you know palette of colors uh just that seemed to be my mood but she has she had a lot of really beautiful different colorways i highly suggest you check her out long dog yarns and hopefully you can see some of her uh material on her website she also has instagram so if you can't find it on the website because it's not being displayed because it's not for sale currently. Maybe you can go back into her Instagram and see her past posts about this uh, collection. So yeah, that was my splurge in February and finally got it. So very excited for those. Now we'll go on to future projects. <laughs> So my, for my future projects, I have mentioned before, I am planning to take socks, um, DK weight socks on my trip with me to Japan that is happening like within 15 days. I'm super excited. I'm also a little terrified for some reason as I've gotten older, I'm less comfortable flying now. And so just flying over a sea for 11 hours is kind of scaring me a little bit. But I've, you know, I've done it before just for not as long. And so hopefully, you know, air travel's pretty safe. It should hopefully go fine. Um, but yeah, so I will be doing the Sueño socks uh, with the high high needles. I plan, I don't actually have a pattern for this. I'm just gonna wing it. Um, but I have chosen to use uh, a diamond brocade pattern, which I will show up here probably. Um, this, you can just look up diamond brocade brocade pattern and you can find a lot of different websites or blogs that give you like the basic rundown of how that stitch pattern looks like and how it's like graphed out. Um, this one I think I got from Studio Knit. Um, but yeah, just type it into Google. You can find all these different websites to give you like a free pattern for just the stitch itself. Uh, it's basically, if you work it flat, you would do multiples of eight plus one stitch because um, it will do that diagonal um, pattern, um, diamond pattern, and basically it would end it at like the two stitches and then you add that one more row to get like that point again. But if you're working with a circular pattern, then it's just multiples of eight because if you're doing it in a circle, then it repeats that first stitch and that like compensates for like the last stitch that you would need if you were working it flat. Um, so basically it's in multiples of eight. So that's why I'm, I'm going to cast on about 48 stitches, do a cuff a little bit, make sure it can get over my foot. Um, and then, you know, work this diamond pattern down the leg. It's going to be like a short cuff. So probably just a couple repeats of the pattern. And then the top of the sock, I want to continue carrying that pattern down. And then on the back is just going to be, and on the foot, it's just going to be underneath where you're walking it's just going to be like a normal stock and stitch but this will still like add a little bit of interest to it without having to like bring cables 
like or cable needles to do cables and deal with all that stuff. Uh, so that's what I'm planning to do. And um, if that works out well, maybe I'll do like a little write up for a pattern at some point. Um, if people are interested in seeing how I made these socks and if people like how they look. So that is the immediate object that I will be taking on the trip. I will not be taking my dad's socks because I don't want to have to deal with customs and possibly getting that confiscated and you know all that good stuff. So uh, there is that. Um, then I still have a few other projects that after this is all done and I finished my dad's socks and the trip. Uh, the Hermeline by Audrey Borrego, which is about a, it's about $10. It's $9.11 on Ravelry. And I have all that yarn balled up, ready to go. I just have to figure out at least like how to cast things on and do that. And then also the Benth by Natasha Hornby. It is a eight pound, euro pound pattern on Ravelry. And uh, that's something that I want to work on this winter when it's a little more cold. Uh, and that I'll be using yarn that I got processed at a mill plus some merino, not merino, a uh, mohair that I bought from um, Big Little Yarn Company. So those are still in my future projects list. And um, you know what? It's I'm done with my update. Uh, if that's all you want to see, thanks for coming this far and watching this. Um, but if you want to talk or just like, you know, hang out and as I talk about, you know, burn out, feel free to continue with this. But um, this is going to be like a little heart to heart. So uh, without further ado, let's discuss burnout. So if you're staying around for this, um, you know, this will involve, you know, a little bit of my own personal life experience that's happening right now. Um, I am like very much a neurodivergent female and for me, like distressing from the day, I tend to just like being by myself and being in my house. So unfortunately that require like basically just sets me up to talk about, you know, these are some of the issues that I've had. I know other people have the same experience, so I'm sorry if this sounds very much centered around me. It's because <laughs> that's the experience I know besides, you know, a few other people um, that I, you know, talk with and stuff. So, um, yeah, so recently in the last month and a half, two months, I've definitely been feeling a lot of burnout. I, you know, we all strive to have a balanced work life, uh, home life, things like that. But of course, with like modern day world, that's not always possible. Um, and especially if we have developed habits, you know, for certain things. Like I know I'm a person that connects my worth, self worth to like my job and the hobbies I do, the things that I create which isn't always a healthy thing. But um, yeah, so this year I was hoping to apply to go become more higher up in the uh, company that I work with. And you know, there there's a hiring freeze. So we did the interview, you know, we were waiting to hear back on that. And then finally the company announced that they were doing a hiring freeze. And you know, that can be an extreme bummer. So. I was feeling very burnt out at work because I felt like I had put in a lot of work and effort and now everything was kind of just in limbo and maybe this, um, you know, interview was going to be for nothing. Um, it's something that they planned for a month and now it's going to the end of the year. So yeah, like if you've had that experience, I'm pretty sure a lot of people would feel burnt out about that. It's, you know, e exhausting and disappointing and because of that burnout and work, it can travel like across to your hobbies. And so this past month and a half, I've really felt it. Like when I get home, I'm too tired to craft or do things. Um, and so like, I take it really hard. I put a lot of pressure of that on myself, but like, let's try and discuss like, and come up with a solution for the burnout that you're feeling and like how to best navigate 
that time because it's something that happens to everybody and you shouldn't treat yourself harshly for it. Um, you know, it's something where you should try and like rest and relax and, you know, possibly if you need to get help, get help. I've gone and got help, um, you know, start seeing, um, going to therapy and stuff. So, uh, I think everybody needs therapy, you know, just some people need more therapy than others. There's nothing bad. It's like a lovely experience. You get to talk with somebody, get somebody's different viewpoint and they can give suggestions or like open you up to new ideas that you wouldn't exactly have thought about for yourself. So here are some tips that I kind of found for burnout. Um, whether you're like, and this is mostly about your hobby burnout, uh, you know, jobs, you know, it is what it is. What you can do is try and work through that burnout or if you're really not feeling it, maybe it's time to apply for a new job. I don't know. But um, for the hobbies, at least, uh, for instance, like, you know, if you don't feel like doing your hobby, don't push yourself to do your hobby. Maybe try a different hobby that you have during the time that you haven't really been practicing. Maybe that will give you a new fresh start. Or, you know, try a completely different hobby that you never even did, but you, like you've always had interest in it. Maybe just a whole entire new slate. Try something new, a new hobby. Um, another option is, you know, uh, relaxing, which everybody's like, yeah, relaxing is good. But uh, for instance, like try a different way of focus, like meditation, yoga, even just exercise, getting out of the house, getting out of the area where you feel like you're burying all that stress and burnout, just get out, take a hike, do something like that. Um, I know that sometimes hiking is like really great, uh, especially it allows you to like do something, but like you're enjoying things, like hopefully you're allowing yourself time to think and process things. And so, um, you know, things that breathing techniques to help calm yourself down if you feel like very uptight and stressed. Um, try something like that. Also, like the hobbies that you do, try a different media. So as I grew older, I traditionally did hobbies that had a finished project, like, or a finished product. Cooking, quilting, knitting. These are all things that usually help you relax, but also they have a finished project. It is like functional for the most part if you finish your projects. Um, but I've noticed that more recently, I've delved back into doing a little bit of video games, um, computer games, video games, things like that. Um, basically places where sure you're, you might be building an online world, but it's not like a tangible good and it doesn't have a purpose per se. Like, and I found that that has been, you know, it's enabled me to kind of calm down and relax and reset a little bit. So like maybe trying a different genre of something, if it's tangible versus the non-tangible hobbies. Um, things like that. So I've definitely gotten back into computer games a little bit and just for like an hour here or an hour there I found has like really helped to reduce stress, especially on certain days where I'm feeling it more like Sundays where everything's kind of just coming back together and you got to go to work the next day. Take an hour off just to like do something that doesn't have a finished project and you know it just allows you to exist. Uh, another thing, of course, is rest. Uh, so if you're tired, take a nap. Don't be harsh on yourself if you feel tired. It's okay to be exhausted. You don't need to, like, justify giving yourself rest, especially with, like, the modern times right now. It's you're juggling so many things, you know, in the traditional uh, work uh, how our, you know, 40 hour week was created was back in the day when, you know, there was usually one breadwinner of the family, they would go and do the job, somebody else was home, uh, taking care of house chores and the kids and things like that. And it's still modeled after that. But nowadays, there's so much more stress with like inflation, prices, a lot of people are more single, they don't have somebody staying at home. Um, everybody is usually traditionally, at this point, doing a job, but also doing work at home. And like both things are work, like homework or the house has always been undervalued work because it usually was women's work. Um, you know, so uh, 
you're going to be tired because you're usually doing two to three jobs. If you've got kids, that's a job in its own, taking care of them, raising them. If you've got a house or an apartment, uh, cleaning it, uh, you know, creating food, all that stuff, that's another job. And then your 40 hour week on top of it. So like, you're going to be tired. It is okay to rest and say, Hey, I'm going to, you know, skip this for night and take some rest. It's also a good idea to like ask your partner for help. You know, relationships aren't always going to be 50, 50. Some days you're going to be taking on more load or your partner is, um, you know, so just like communicate and say, Hey, I need a little bit of help here. Um, you know, there's a thing called revenge procrastination, which is basically like the decision to like delay sleep, um, because of the stress and like not having free time to do things earlier in the day. And I feel like a lot of people, I know I do this, um, you know, I will postpone going to bed because I just want more time to relax and do the things that I need to do that I wasn't allowed to do during the day. Cause I go to work. Like I do not have a, like from home residential work, um, uh, you know, scenario. So anything that had to be done at home has to wait till the end of the day. So I definitely do that. So sometimes you have to create boundaries and just, you know, set a timer and be like, okay, this is the amount of time I'm going to allow myself to read, uh, to do things. And then after that, I'm going to go to bed, like set boundaries for yourself because the less sleep you get, the more tired and stressed out you are because it's all interconnected. Um, so yeah, just like try and set your boundaries for like when you're going to go to bed, put your devices down, things like that. And then the fourth thing, which, you know, I didn't really see on the internet too much, but it's probably there somewhere. I only looked at a few sites is if you have the ability to, and I know this is, feels very much like a privilege and a luxury nowadays, especially in the United States, is if you have the ability to take a vacation, do it. Like, um, I am very lucky in that the company that I work for, I do get benefits, I do get vacation time, I do get health insurance, uh, 401ks. This is not a standard anymore whatsoever So whatever in the society. Um, and you know, if you do get vacation time, it's sometimes a little different for everybody. Some places allow you to pay out your vacation hours at the end of the year if you didn't use them all. My company, you need to use it or you lose it. So, you know, if you're feeling tired and burnt out and you've got vacation days, use them try and like use them either it could be a stay home vacation just to like relax and not have to deal with work but if you have the ability to go and travel and like do something else that can definitely help with your mindset and like resetting yourself for creativity because it allows you to go experience other things and like maybe you can even do just a staycation in a different like place in town like if there's a cute little bed and breakfast in town go there somewhere where you're away from your house if you have that ability to or just travel. Um, so yeah, like this job that you have is, um, you know, you are putting in so many amounts of hour every week for them for work. And in return, they are trading you your pay and your vacation time and your benefits, hopefully. So be sure to use them. Like don't feel guilty about taking them. So let me know what you do to help with any burnout that you might be feeling, whether it be for work or, you know, your hobbies at home, because they're all interconnected. I'd love to hear what everybody's suggestion would be. But yeah, like we all feel burnout. This is all something that happens. And, you know, it's something that just give yourself grace. And eventually, you know, hopefully with some of these tips, they can help you, you know, get back into gear or, you know, just help you get through the day until you, you finally get into a mindset where you feel like you can or do want to do these things again. So sorry for the depressing end of all this, but if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. Any subscriptions would help my channel. It's absolutely free. All you got to do is click a button. It doesn't pay anything, but, um, you know, allows me to bring more content to you guys. So I am hoping that, you know, 
I'm about to go on a trip to Japan, so I'm hoping to take pictures and videos and give you guys an update there, and that'll be more of the update for the next um, time I see you. Uh, and um, hopefully I can get back into gear and start, you know, doing more of the things that I like to do. Uh, so, good luck, and uh, thanks again for watching. Bye!